Well, it was a memoir turned bestseller book turned box office hit. It's Eat, Pray, Love. Author Elizabeth Gilbert has seen huge success through the story of her trip of a lifetime. Elizabeth told her story and now she's back in action to tell another. And we are so happy to welcome Elizabeth to Delmarva Life today. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me on. Uh, first of all, Elizabeth, take us back to the beginning. How did you get into writing? Oh, I don't think there's ever anything I wanted to do <laughs> besides writing. I grew up on a, um, on a small family Christmas tree farm, and my parents, um, we didn't have a TV, and we didn't have neighbors, but my parents were really passionate readers. And um, my older sister and I, who also became a writer, spent our entire childhoods doing nothing but reading books and telling stories and writing plays. And um, I think it was sort of destiny that we both ended up as professional storytellers. Oh, what a great story. Now, you uh, had huge success with the book Eat, Pray, Love, and that book took yeah. you to India, Indonesia, Italy. Did all of that travel make you a better storyteller? I think everything you do in the world makes you a better storyteller. I mean, you have to really not be paying attention to come home from a year of traveling around Italy, India, and Indonesia with no stories. <laughs> you know, like you have to really get up early in the morning and work at not looking around to, uh, yeah. to not have stories happen to you. So um, there's nothing better than travel stories. Now, what was it like to see Eat, Pray, Love up on the big screen? Oh my God, crazy. Can you, I mean, just imagine what it would feel like to have Julia Roberts playing you in a movie <laughs> and to get to watch your, your avatar doppelganger making out with Javier Bardem. I mean, it, it's, it's just a, a crazy fever dream. I've, I've never even really adjusted to it. It's so amazing and miraculous. Yeah, now it's been 13 years since you last published a novel, so you're back at yeah. it with The Signature of All Things. Tell us about it. Well, the best way I've heard it described so far um, was a reviewer who said, it's like Jane Austen meets Master and Commander. <laughs> so it's sort of a costume drama. It's a historical novel that takes place in the 19th century, but it's about the um, international world of plant exploration, the early pharmaceutical business, the spice trade. Um, it's, it's adventure on the high seas, it's love and romance, and it stars a, um, a very strong, powerful, intelligent female heroine um, named Alma Whitaker, who is a passionate scientist and a student of the natural world and it tells the story of her entire life and it takes place all over the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So of course you had all the success with nonfiction. What made you go back to writing a novel? I missed it and I also wanted to give a gift to my readers. I wanted to try to present them with the sort of novels that I love to read. Um, I love 19th century literature. I love those big, rolling, sweeping, multi-generational epics. And I've always gotten so much pleasure disappearing into the past and disappearing into those worlds. And I wanted to offer that to my readers and bring them an invitation to join me on this kind of journey as well. All right, now, uh, and obviously a lot of research for this book, right? Yeah, but I'm a geek, so I like that. <laughs> Um, and I'm also a really passionate gardener, and I knew that whatever I was going to write next had to be about plants or it wouldn't hold my attention. Um, but I also didn't want to write a gardening novel because I <laughs> couldn't imagine how that could be interesting. So I had to go back in time to this moment in history when the plant world and the exploration of the plant world was really a life and death um, endeavor. Okay, so what's next for you? Uh, well, I'm um, out there sort of introducing this book to people. I'm going to be on a giant book tour uh, traveling over the, all over the country and indeed all over the world for the next six months. And then after that, I think after having written a book about the buttoned down 19th century, I have this desire to um, write a novel about uh, girls who are a bit more free and loose, maybe um, unlace those corsets a little bit. <laughs> uh oh, okay. <laughs> all right, Elizabeth Gilbert, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. The name of the thank book you. is The Signature of All Things. And if you'd like to read more, more about Elizabeth or for more information on her new book, go to DelmarvaLife.com and click on the show tab. Still to come on Delmarva Life, every mom wants her child to grow up to be an active adult who contributes to the community. Up next, we'll find out how one group marches to the beat of their own drum to give all kids a chance to reach their full potential. Plus, we'll speak with author and television host Terrence J. He tells us how training for his uh, from his loving mother inspired him to reach for the stars and how he's now teaching others the same lesson. But first, we've teamed up with Sussex County Federal Credit Union to help you make better sense of your money. Here's Deb with this week's tip. On behalf of Sussex County Federal Credit Union, I'm Debbie Jewell with this week's dollars and cents tips. 
Do you have a credit card that offers cashback rewards or travel and merchandise rewards? Receiving an incentive for using a specific credit can entice consumers to be swayed to use credit based on the prize at the end. But oftentimes, that little reward comes with a cost. Before you make your next credit card purchase, take a good hard look at the cost involved. Many times, a rewards card comes with an average interest rate of more than 14%, plus a minimum balance transfer fee of 3%. Don't fall for reward gimmicks that cost you more money than they are worth. Together, we can achieve more.